Hey guys, what's up? Pitmar Thor here, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the last episode, we finished up the Snowhead Temple, and in this episode, we have seized Goth's or Goat's remains, and we'll watch the cutscenes for all of that stuff. So, two videos, that's pretty good. I don't really count this one as doing the temple because we finished it in the last episode, killed the boss in the last episode. So, two videos for the second. That one is pretty good. And, whoa, close up the Link, Link's eyes, his 64-bit eyes. What exactly are all of you? Well, I already kind of told them that. They're giants. But, you know, I'm not really spoiling any plot because this game has been out for 11 years. I know I've said that. can't say that enough, but... Even if you haven't beaten the game, you probably know enough about it. So these guys are guardians. Protective gods. That's why you're in the temples. But why are the protective gods... Stuck uh, because they got cursed by the Skull Kid. So that one doesn't actually do anything. Um, I don't believe any of them actually give you anything except that first one that gives you the uh, Oath to Order. It seems like you'd get that on the last one, but no, they give it to you on the first one. I guess it's to see what happened if you just tried to call one of them and it didn't work, work or something like that, and I just take up. So yeah, this is probably the uh, boss that has the most change. After you beat it, like, you know, it does the most. Like, the poison water's gone, but this uh, stops the snow and actually gives you a lot of stuff to open up. The third one doesn't do much, and the fourth one does absolutely nothing at all. They make this huge presentation about it, and it does jack squat. Now... Just to be fair, it's not going to get rid of all the snow. It'll get rid of, like, little patches of it. The Goron Village isn't covered in snow or anymore. But, you know, like, there's still snow, like, right here. Now, make sure you're not stupid like I used to be in this game. Make sure to go back and put the Stray Fairies where they belong, which is with the other ones. Because I always forgot that. I'd be like, okay, we're done. Now I can just save and play the song, or play the song of time and, you know, save and go back to Dawn of the First Day. Because there's a huge thing you can do after here. It's one of the most helpful things to do in the game, but uh, you do want the upgrade for it. I don't think you need it, but it is helpful. And like I said, this guy's still alive right here. Hey, you. Hey, you. Speak. What in the world have I been doing this whole time? Why am I sitting in a place like this? Why am I asking so many questions? Ah, uh, yes, I need the bunny hood. Well, I don't need it, but make the trip a little bit faster here. There are gways around here now. Those are the birds you've been seeing. They're known as gways. I might just call them birds or crows, but they're called, their official name is the guay. Just ignore them. And all the white wolfos around the area are now just regular wolfos. I don't know why that, because the power is exactly the same, so there's really no point. You know, the white wolfos are in snowy areas, and the regular ones aren't, so that's about it. So go to your right, and it's directly right here. Alright, I'm glad to get this power up, because this is going to be really, really helpful. I'm telling you, it is... This one is my favorite one. Now, it used to be the third one was, but this one I found is more helpful. If you're a better player, this you'll find this one to be more helpful, but if you're new to the game, you'll probably find the third one more helpful. I think this one's better, though. That's just me. What this does is it doubles your magic meter. Thank goodness. That first one was far too small to get a lot of stuff done. So now we have twice as much, which I already stated game. But hey, whatever. You gave me the power-up, so I'll let it slide. So that is much more helpful. I'm very glad to have that one. Alright, I'm trying to think of what else I could do here. I know there's something else you can do, but you've got to still have it be dawn of the first day. Uh, let's go back to the mountain village. Yeah, well, there is something we can do here, actually. I, I was trying to think if I needed to play the Song of Time and go back to dawn of the first day for this or not. I don't think you need to. You do have to have the uh, temple beaten, though. And you're, like I said, you're going to have to go back and beat it at least one more time if you're going to 100% this game. Which is fairly annoying, but hey, you got to do it. Alright, so let's just get over here quickly. 
Uh, if you take this path over here, this will actually take you up to the, um, that little staircase. Where is it? Yeah, over here. You can see all the stuff now. It'll actually take you back up to, uh, Darmani's grave or Darmani or whatever. Whatever his name is. Alright, Goron Village. Making sure I'm going the right way here. Now, uh, be careful when you're going across these bridges if you're a Goron because all that ice under it now is all water. So if you fall down there, this is what's going to happen. So, yeah, don't do that. You can just stay as regular Link if you want to. I kind of find it funny that the entrance to the Goron area has got these really small rope bridges. And keep in mind, the Gorons are basically rocks that are really heavy. And it's all over water, which kills them. So, once again, the Gorons are morons, as stated in a previous title of one of the Majora's Mask videos. But yes, the village is a little bit more cleared out now. I mean, you know, the roofs are still made of ice, but I think they're supposed to be. But it's a little bit more cleaned out now. So what we need to do is go over here. Let's get this out of the way first, because there's something you have to... A mini game of sorts you got to do here in a second. So let's get rid of this, because it gets in the way. Alright, so let's talk to him. So basically this guy makes a powder keg, but what he has to do is test you. Apparently you have to earn the right to um, use the powder keg. So what we need to do is use this to get rid of the rock that blocks the Goron racetrack, which you guys will may have already probably seen. We actually passed it on the way back here. Now you can't carry this up there with you because you've got to roll up these ledges, so you've got to pick it up and throw it. Now, for the most part, the time in here is not too lenient, but it's not horribly bad either. It's still doable. Just don't shoot it with an arrow or it will explode, but, you know, why would you shoot it with an arrow? And the fuse kind of tells you how much time you've got left, but like I said, the time isn't too bad. As long as you focus on what you're doing here, you shouldn't run out of time. I don't think I ever actually have run out of time. So the racetrack is actually in that area where all the bridges are. This one right here. You can actually see the boulder up in the top. Well, you can't now, now, but you could a second ago. Get out of my way, Wolfos. Gonna ignore the Wolfos. Gonna ignore Tingle. Of course, he's not an enemy, so I don't know if he counts. Gonna ignore the Gways. Gonna ignore that thingamajig. The Tektite. The blue Tektite. And more ledges to throw it up. Yay. I don't get the point of this because it's not hard to throw them up the ledges and then just go up there. And it looks like I'm running low on time when I'm actually not. Alright, so we will drop it right there. Uh, if you want, you can talk to this kid right here. And this is that kid that was crying. So Goron Race should be starting soon, but the rock has blocked the road so he can't see the race and he'll start crying saying he wants to see the race. So what we need to do now, uh, if it didn't blow up already, which it may not have if you were pretty fast at it, you can shoot it with an arrow to blow it up. Boom. So he's going inside to watch the races. However, before we go in there, because you can do racing there, uh, but it's too late to do that for the ability that we or the item that we want. However, we can go back and get the approval to use powder kegs from that one guy, so that is where we're going to head. And I could cut out, but I don't want to because you guys know how well cut videos works, because I can cut the video just fine, but if I've got to cut pieces and put them together, I've got to use Movie Maker, and let me tell you something. Movie Maker does not like my camera or something, because it makes the file size gigantic. If anybody knows of a, a good way to, um, you know cut the videos like that and put them together without the file size becoming gigantic, let me know. I've got Camtasia, but I don't really use it ever. Because it always saves as a Camtasia document, so I can't just put it up on YouTube. But hey, I might get it figured out with some people that do have it, because a lot of my co-op channel members use it. It was bad of me to put you through a dangerous chest, whatever. You get a powder keg, but more importantly, you have the ability to get them. You can buy them at uh, Clock Town in the bomb shop for 50 rupees each, and you can only carry one of these at a time. Uh, this is actually a required item, believe it or not. Uh, you have to get this for the uh, fourth temple, or the fourth area leading up to the temple. 
Um, is there anything else to get? I don't think there is. So, what we're gonna do is... We're actually gonna save and put our rupees in the bank and play the Song of Time. Not in that order. We're gonna put our rupees in the bank, play the Song of Time, and save. That's what we're going to do. So, let's go back to Clock Town. Oh, and by the way, if you're a Goron or a... Well, no, I can't say the other one right now. If you're a Goron, you can just walk right past the guards without having to talk to them to prove that you have a sword or anything like that, because I guess the Goron's considered an adult. Oh, wait, there is something else we can do now that we have the uh, Goron ability. This is kind of a small thing, though. It's not that big of a deal, but hey, let's go ahead and get it done. I don't know if this place is open during night or not, but if it isn't, we can just play the Song of Double Time. Hooray for the Song of Double Time! I wonder who first figured that out. They probably got it by accident. Uh, is it open? Hey, it is! Alright. Alright, so this is the treasure chest shop. Basically, they'll make a treasure chest spawn at the end of this, and all these platforms will shoot up in the air. And depending on... This lady's very shallow, so depending on what race you are, whether you're Deku, human, or Goron, she'll charge you different stuff, but you can get different prizes. Now, since you're an ugly Goron, you have to pay 30 rupees. I think Link regularly pays 20. I think the Deku pays 10. And then the other transformation mask pays only five. But what's cool about this is you can actually trick the game out because the prize is already inside there. It doesn't change. So you can take the mask off, switch back to Link, and put the bunny coat on so you can get this done faster. No, I don't want to pull out my ocarina, you dummy. Now the maze is always randomized, so that you've got to be kind of wary about. Okay, fortunately I got to mine very soon, but you can get kind of stuck because sometimes the starting point you choose will actually be incorrect. And so you'll have to go back all the way to the start, and by then it's already too late. But if you do that as a Goron, you get a piece of heart for that. So that's definitely worth your time. Uh, no, we don't want to try again. There's really nothing else to get other than rupees. It's kind of a one-time thing. I don't believe there's anything else you can get in Clock Town as a Goron, or, you know, major. Get anything major as a Goron. Other than rupees, like, from that. Um, nothing to do with the powder keg here, so... Now let's go ahead and put our rupees in the bank and play the Song of Time. Unless the mailman's out. I don't know, he could be... Let's find out. He might be, actually, where we can play that mini game, Which would be nice to do right now, because... I'm not good at keeping track of when he's around here and when he's not. Now hopefully he will be... Excellent. Good. Uh, he's got a schedule right here. So in the evening, that's when he's here, but sometimes I come here in the evening and he's still not here. Four, five, six. Wah! Those ears! Oh, they're fake. You startled me. Don't disrupt my training. In my mind, I am running for exactly ten seconds without looking at a clock. I was in the middle of mental training. You may make fun of me, but this is quite difficult. Actually, it kind of is. Will you try? Yes. So you press A to start, count 10 seconds, and the precise moment you think you've hit 10 on the dot, press A again. If you're in the bunny hood, you can see the clock. If not, you will not be seeing that. So, yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10. Boom. 10 seconds. I usually go by the clicks, like tapping the A button. Not fully, but, you know, like half tapping it where it doesn't actually do anything as each sec or each of the clicks goes by, and then once you get to the 10th one just today, for real. But that will give you a piece of heart. Uh, if you don't get it the first time, I think he makes you pay like two rupees each time, something really inexpensive, but just so you know. All right, so that wasn't too bad. And even though you may only have a small amount, like in my case, 79 rupees or 110, or even if you got something as small as 20, keep putting your rupees in the bank and they will add up because you do need, like I said, to get uh, 5,000. And I've got 800 already, so there's a really easy way to grind later on, though. All right, so for this three-day cycle... This next one right here, we're only going to be doing one thing, but it is definitely worth your time because it's easy to do. Well, not really, but it's definitely worth the upgrade. 
it's not like a stray fairy upgrade or anything like that, but it's definitely really, really helpful. There's actually uh, something else we can do now that I think about it, but uh, let's do this first because this is more important, really. We're not going to be able to get it done fully in this video, but hey, we'll get a good amount of it done. So yes, the quickest way to the ocean is through the west gate, but we're not going to go there just yet. You can actually play the inverted song of time. I know you'll have to be using a three-day cycle for this, but since you can play the song of double time, you don't have to, like, it's not like you have to wait for a specific time of day, like midnight on the first day with the kidnapping, or not the kidnapping, the, um, the bomb lady getting her bomb stolen or anything like that. So sadly what we have to do is go and beat that boss again, got, or goat. Unfortunately, like I said, this is very easy, and you'll be seeing the cutscene of how you get to the boss room immediately. Okay, I don't need a fairy. That's not what I'm worried about. I want arrows. And magic wouldn't hurt either, even though it's just that teeny bit. And warning. And there we go. A right, left, A right, left, right, A. Yeah, sometimes in, I don't know if this is only on the Wii Shop Channel version, but I can, uh, one time I, or actually a lot of the times, I play the song of soaring really, really fast. Like, I get out my Ocarina, immediately start playing it, and I'll play it correctly, but it won't read it, because I went too fast. So sometimes I have to play the thing two or three times. But I don't know, maybe it's just because I play the songs too fast. I never had that problem in Ocarina of Time, but then again, I always have problems remembering some of the Ocarina of Time songs. Not all of them, but a fair amount. Because I always forget about the Sun song because, of, you know, like I'll accidentally play the song of Double Time or something like that. I don't think I need this, but, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have it anyway. Because if I mess up... That's going to be really embarrassing getting a game over on probably the easiest boss in the game. I'm dead. Actually, I'm not. But I honestly think this boss is easier than uh, Old Dolwa because, you know, like, y you could go for all the upgrades that I went for but if you before the temple, but if you didn't, you're only going to face him with three hearts. And that's actually pretty difficult. And also, you can get confused the first time playing thinking you need to put on the Deku Mask when you actually don't. And Gott is kind of hard to hit because he jumps around a lot. This boss is more bulky, so he's easier to hit. And that one dropped bombs. That's funny. I thought they only dropped magic. But I'm going to go ahead and beat the boss off screen. So I will see you guys next time for more of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Uh, let's see if I can get the... um, Dude! Fine. We won't see the cutscene then. Basically, it just like has this voice that goes, Ye who hold my remains... Um, Return to the appointed place to face me, and then there will be a light that shines down in the Majora symbol. It's pretty obvious where you need to go.